It's important to understand the anatomy of the shoulder if you're proceeding with some type of treatment or surgery of the shoulder uh, for a condition related to the rotator cuff or the labrum, which is the lip or the rim of the socket, or the actual bones of the shoulder. The shoulder joint is a very complex joint, and it has three bones that make up the shoulder joint. The clavicle or the collarbone, which is right up front, the arm bone, which is known as the humerus, and then the shoulder blade, which is known as the scapula. And this sits on the back of our chest wall or our ribs. The most common surgery that's performed related to the shoulder is surgery of the rotator cuff. Sometimes it's only to clear out room for the rotator cuff, and sometimes it's to actually repair the rotator cuff tendon. If we take the shoulder and turn it sideways so that we're looking from the lateral or outside part of the arm, we can see that there is this white tendinous structure that sits over the top of the arm bone. This is the rotator cuff tendon. It is formed by four muscles that come from our shoulder blade. If we look from the back of the shoulder, there's a muscle that's above the spine of the scapula that's called the supraspinatus. This is the most commonly injured tendon. It goes underneath the bone that's known as the acromion and attaches over to the outside part of the arm. This muscle is responsible for a part of our early movements of raising up our arm. The second muscle that's injured is the infraspinatus, or the muscle that's below the spine of the scapula. This infraspinatus mus muscle is very broad, but the actual tendon comes across in the back part of the shoulder and is a relatively short tendon. This tendon is responsible for the rotation movements in an outward direction. And so it's very important for our daily activities and the things that we do at the level of the table. There is one other small muscle at the very bottom, which is known as the teres minor. This muscle is in use when we place our arms away from our body and use it to rotate in this direction here. When all three of these muscles are torn, it's very difficult, if not impossible, for individuals to actually raise up their arm and keep it in this position as it wants to drift down in this area. Now, the last part of the rotator cuff, which is actually the largest muscle and the strongest one, is the one on the front, which we can't see very well because it's between our shoulder blade and our chest wall. And that's the muscle known as the subscapularis muscle. It's got a broad assert insertion on the front part of the scapula, and then a very big tendon fixes onto the front part of the arm bone. This muscle is very valuable for rotating our arms inward, but also in terms of stabilizing the ball in the socket. When this muscle tears, it's hard to raise up the arm, but also it's hard to keep the ball in the socket, and that can be very debilitating for our patients.